Hey guys, we're up in Game Bad today for our video for our weapon conversion series. Today we're covering our first weapon conversion for Call of Duty Vanguard. And today's weapon is going to be the STG-44 or the Sturmgewehr 44 with the Zelgret 1229 infrared aiming sight device, also known as the Vampire. So we're making the STG-44 Vampire here with this build. Go ahead and back out, show you guys the build. We'll go ahead and jump in, look at the recoil pattern, and then go ahead and see how it handles in-game against bots. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So we back out, here is our final design for the SCG-44 Vampire. We'll back out and what we'll do is strip this thing down to base. Now, some interesting things to note here before we start building the weapon really quick is the front sight post. You're gonna wanna look at the front sight post there, right there in the front on the base of the barrel right before that threaded muzzle device will disappear when we put an optic on it. So the muzzle device is just so you guys can see what we have here, we have the compensator, a silencer, flash hider, recoil booster, another suppressor here, the mercury silencer. And again, you can see the stats, pros and cons here. Uh, again, really good. It's giving you what it is plus one, uh, not just what the pros and cons are, but how many points up and down you're going, which is nice. The You have a cord muzzle brake and an FB stabilizer. So those are our devices. However, we are going to leave it at base because that is the actual muzzle device, that threaded muzzle device that came with the Storm Guru. 44 or the mp43 or the mp44 as it is also designated we'll call it the stg44 here now for the barrel option in the gameplay you're going to see me use a slightly different barrel but for the recoil pattern we'll use the base barrel so the base barrel here in real life this weapon it came about a 16 a little bit over a 16 inch barrel length here in real life it was about 16 and a half i believe so the base barrel is going to be the closest option we have to that what you do have though are shorter barrels and longer barrels so you have a 320 millimeter you have a 760 millimeter, which is just a crazy long barrel on this thing. You also have a 620 meter, which is going to be or millimeter, which is going to be around 24 inches, and then you have the 220 millimeter. So backing out, you're going to see we're going to want the base base barrel option will give us that 16 and a half inch or closest to. Now for the optic here, we're going to go ahead and put on. We want that correct night vision optic. So. In real life, if you're not aware, basically the Germans at the time came up with what is the first and attributed to attributed to the first and basically what has influenced modern military today uh, with a night vision or a infrared aiming device called the the Vampire for short as its code name. So here we'll go with the Mark 12 night vision sight. This is going to be an infrared scope, restricted field of view, but provides improved low visibility or low light visibility. So you can see the pros and cons there, the accuracy plus two, recoil pl control plus two, gonna give us a three time magnification and night vision optic. Cons here are just the ADS speed. So we'll go ahead and select that. And again, in real life, this is based off of the Zalgarat 1229 infrared aiming device, code name Vampire. So we'll go ahead and put that on. Now for the stock option, we're gonna actually leave the base stock option, but you can see we have the MP40 buttstock here. And then we have just some other nice looking options. We have the remove stock, some different wooded options, again, with a cheek breast there as well. Now, proficiency, these are cool. We're gonna go with nerves of steel. It's gonna give us the accuracy and recoil while injured or suppressed. So if you're taking fire, it'll just allow you to stay on target. Now for the kit, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll be running fully loaded for this one just so we have max starting ammo, but you can see all of the options here. We have fast melee, gonna give us the melee quickness. We have reach for melee range. Surplus is plus one kill XP. Deep breath is hold breath longer. Fully loaded is pretty obvious. Defender is mounted movement. You have heavy hitter and on hand. So equipment dexterity. So we'll go ahead and do the fully loaded. Now for the rear grip here, again, these ones, I think the base grip is, no matter what option you put on here, it really retains its base look. So go ahead and we'll just put you can really go probably with any of these options, to be honest. I think we'll go probably with the granulated grip is gonna give us the aim and stability, the aim walking steadiness, and the aim walking movement speed. But you can really choose any one of these and you'll be fine. None of them really look look bad on the weapon. And I think they did a really good job of blending um, these attachments with how the weapon looks in real life. So we'll go ahead and select that. Now the magazine option here for the SCG-44. Now in real life, this thing fires uh, 7.62 by 33 millimeter or what is 8 millimeter Kurz round. So in, or excuse me, it's 7.92 by 33 or 8 millimeter Kurz. So 
You have the, here we have an option for a 7.62 uh, Gorenko. We have a Russian short, which is going to, these are all going to be different ammo conversions. So we have, this is going to give us a much a smaller ammo. So we're going to go from a 7.92 to a 7.62. Here we'll go from a uh, 7.92 to a 30 out Russian short. So it's going to give us a larger caliber round. And then here's the 8mm Kurs with the 792 by 33 45 round drum, which was not a real option for this weapon at least. And then here we have the 30 out Russian short 30 rounds of the same caliber here, just a little bit more munition there. So we'll go ahead and leave that at the base because we want that 30 round 8mm Kurs with the 792 by 33 Now the ammo type for this one really any of these are nice. I think the subsonic ones, I don't believe existed subsonic rounds back then, at least not for this weapon. Um, for the ammo type here, we're going to want the lengthened. I think it's just going to be a good one. You can use really whichever one you want, but the lengthened one is going to give us the bullet velocity increase plus three on this thing. So that'll be really nice. You can see all the different pros and cons here. You have delays healing and hitting legs for slow, slowing down your enemy with the frangible. FMJ rounds go through bullet penetration and subsonic. So we'll go with the lengthened rounds here. And then for the underbarrel attachment, we're going to go with the M1941 hand stop. So this one, you can go, ideally you want no underbarrel attachment, but this one I think is going to give you a plus one for recoil control and plus one for accuracy. The cons here are going to be the hip fire accuracy. But again, this thing, if we select that, you can see it looks very realistic on there. You can't go wrong with this thing. It gives you the right pros and cons and it doesn't take away from the real life weapon aesthetic. So this is our final design for the M or the STG-44 Vampire build. So just some things to note before we jump into the gameplay here. The weapon itself, you can see the charging handle. Oh, well, first off, the front sight post, you can see when you put an optic on there, it's gonna be removed, like I said earlier. Then you have the charging handle right there on the left-hand side, uh, right above the mag well. You have the magazine. There, and right above the magazine, you see, uh, let's go ahead and we'll inspect it, we'll get a better look. So there's our charging handle. And then we'll look here, get a shot of the magazine. So that threaded uh, little circular piece above the magazine there, there's a better shot of it. That little circular threaded piece above the magazine is a magazine release. You have the select fire option there on the left-hand side right behind the trigger. So we'll switch, wait till this flips back around so we can see that. So there we have the, you see the select fire there right at the bottom. You have you have fire and safe options on that and then there's that little when we switch back over to it you'll have a little threaded device right above the select fire so that little threaded thumb piece right above the select fire that'll allow you to go when it is in fire mode you can select either from single fire or full auto by pushing that thing through so you can see it on the right hand side of the weapon it's pushed pushed through so unfortunately we can't zoom like this but you can see it there right above the, the fire selection switch you see that little threaded device. So here it's pushed through to the right hand side. And if we switch over to the right, you can see it's pushed through there. So that'll be, I believe, full auto. And if you push it back to the other side and kept the select fire option in fire mode, it would be single fire. However, the rate of fire on this thing was slow enough that you could control it on full auto, or you could, if you had a good trigger finger, be able to control this thing. So those are all of the, uh, I guess, the important points to cover here. We also have this little spring-loaded, um, I guess, insertion point here at the top of the wooden buttstock. That would just be, I believe, you'd have some oil and things like that in the kit to clean the weapon in there. Then here on the front of the weapon, that little thing that's sticking out in front of the gas block is going to be the plug for the gas block as well as stacking rods right there. Other than that, that's about all there is to this weapon. The buttstock is made of wood. You have threaded wood there just for a little bit more uh, grip and easily pressing it to your shoulder. And then you have the, uh, what, what is the sling point there on the front of the handguard on the right hand side. So that is the SG44 Vampire. Now in real life, this optic here, you can see there's some cords there on the right hand side of the optic. Again, this is the first night vision or infrared sight. In real life, this thing would have a cord that would hook up to a battery pack and would give you uh, 10 minutes of infrared sight. So let's go ahead. This is the final design of the weapon you can see here. One last look at this at the SG44 Vampire. Now, in the gameplay that you'll see, I'll do it. I'll use the base barrel build here for the recoil control, but in the gameplay you're going to see, I'm going to be using the 620 millimeter barrel. I think this one, it adds eight inches to the barrel length, and I think it looks, it still looks very realistic to what the weapon would have looked like in real life. You're just adding 
a little bit of extra length there, you're getting the highly accurate and controllable increase for a pro and the headshot damage pro cons are reduced body damage and sprint to fire speed. You also have the extra long barrel here. You can see the pros and cons there. So we'll go ahead and use that one for the gameplay itself, but for the recoil control test, we'll go ahead and use this particular build with a base barrel. So let's go ahead and we'll jump right into that. Okay, so here we are with the SCG 44 Vampire. So let's go ahead now and we'll look at the recoil pattern test. So I'm, first off, I'm not going to control the recoil. We'll just let this thing climb. So you can see there, it didn't really kick too much. Pretty easy to control. Now I'm gonna hold my breath and control it here, okay? So we'll hold my breath. So there we go, let's go ahead and check that out. So you can see the first one kicks up and to the right slightly and then holding my breath, we're gonna get a nice little tight cluster right there. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. This time I'll hold my breath again. And now we'll let it go. Okay, so here's us controlling it. And here it is, just letting it rip. It's going to go basically straight up and then slightly to the right at the end there. So that's the SUG 44 Vampire. Okay, so go ahead and jump into the gameplay here. You'll see probably a mix of a few different games here that I'm playing with this just against bots. And in one of them here, I'm gonna go ahead and get a V2. So you guys will go ahead and see how that looks as well. We're gonna go ahead and get the uh, machine gun loadout or the call in there, as well as the flamethrower for the kill streak. So we'll get all of those you'll see here in the gameplay as well. Now the SCG-44, again, this weapon put into service in 1944 or the very late or end of 1943. So the Storm Gewehr 44, this is basically a weapon that was meant to replace the MP40. And this was supposed to ideally be basically the universal weapon for the German military in the future. This would replace almost everything, maybe minus some of the machine guns. But the idea was to have one rifleman with this being the world's first assault rifle and have basically have a assault sniper. So they would have the ability to go fully automatic and the ability to equip the optics like this. So a single infantryman could engage at multiple ranges with one weapon you're going to save because you're going to have a weapon like this with it's all stamped sheet metal as well as being able to equip different optics to it now in real life the SCG 44 was only really accurate out to 300 meters which proved to be about the max firing range that you would want to be engaging targets anyways with this so the type of rifle that this thing is is an assault rifle obviously place of origin being germany it was developed by hugo schmeiser and it's been in service since 1943 to 1945 and then 1949 to 1962 in East Germany. So it saw various wars, obviously World War II came in at the very end of World War. It saw the Algerian War, Vietnam War Limited in that war. We had it in the Lebanese Civil War, the Iraqi War, and the Syrian Civil War is where this thing saw service. The designer again is Hugo Schmeiser. Design period was 1938 through 1944. It went through a few different iterations. You'll notice that this thing is also referred to as the MP43 and the MP44, and eventually the STG44. The MP meaning that it was supposed to be replacing the series of weapons like the MP40 for the machine pistol 40, for the MP43 destination 44, and then it got the name the STG44. So you'll see it often referred to all three of those. Now. The unit cost was around, in 1944, was 70 RM. The production period for this was 43 through 45. Number of units built was actually 425,977. And it did have quite a few variants being the MKB-42, the MKB-42W, MP-43, MP-43-1, and the MP-44. Now the mass of this thing in real life is going to be 10 pounds, 2 ounces unloaded, or 11 pounds, 5 ounces loaded. So not a huge difference there, unloaded versus loaded. The length is going to be 37 inches, with the barrel length being 16.5 inches, as we discussed. The cartridge is going to fire that 7.92 by 33 millimeter Kurz round, also known as the 8 millimeter Kurz. So the caliber, again, is often referred to as 8mm. Now the action for this is a gas-operated long-stroke piston with a tilting bolt, and it is select fire. Now the rate of fire in real life is going to be around 500 through 600 rounds per minute, and because of the smaller caliber, 
it's uh, it's almost equivalent to the 762 by 39 Russian caliber. However, it's a little bit less powerful. Uh, the 792 by 33 was easier to control and sustain fully automatic fire. And again, being with the range was limited to around 300 meters. It was perfect range of spent, and you could, if you had a good trigger finger, control it and the ability to go single fire to fully automatic. The muzzle velocity in real life here is going to be 685 meters per second or 2,247 feet per second. Effective range, as I said, is 300 meters or 600 meters in semi automatic. 300 meters for automatic, 600 for semi auto. However, your engagement range at max was typically 300 meters in the combat that this thing saw. Feet system was the 30 round attached to a box magazine. And then for the iron sights on this, you did have the rear V notch iron sights on there that were actually were adjustable out to 800 meters, even though the weapon typically didn't go out that far. But it, you did have the option to extend your ranges. Now, one thing about this weapon with this particular variant, the SCG 44 Vampire build, the Zigart 1229 infrared aiming device known as the Vampire that we're talking about here in real life was a lot larger than what you're seeing on the weapon. And it did have a, what is a basically a, a cord connected to it, which had to go to a battery powered backpack that the soldier would carry. And it only had 10 minutes of battery life on it. However, this allowed you to see in complete darkness. So this was the very first night vision or infrared optic available ever on the very first assault rifle. This, the German military, uh, despite everything going on in World War II, basically set the standard for what militaries were using going forward. The idea to have, as we talked about, Hitler wanted to have one rifle that filled, fulfilled multiple roles, have optics that could be put on these weapons to fulfill almost all roles and that's kind of what we see today, especially with the night vision optics. But basically today you have an M4 with different optics on there, different barrel lengths. So you have the rifleman fulfill those different roles. Obviously you don't supplement the machine gunner role with something like an M4 or an M16, but you basically have that same idea in today's modern military. And then all of the technology that the Germans came up with during World War II, one of those being the vampire optic with the infrared and night vision optics, kind of set the standard for that whole thing going forward after the world after the war night vision development infrared optics um everything the germans developed during world war ii really did set the standard for today and we can honestly thank them for cell phones lithium batteries all of that they kind of did they had their hands in a lot going on in world war ii and a lot of our modern technology can be attributed to what happened in in world war ii nazi germany so this is a really interesting optic again a battery powered optic show I would have shown a few pictures on screen by now, but again, you had to have that huge battery backpack there. But very effective weapon, very cool conversion with this. I'm really happy they actually put the optic here in the game. And I'm actually very pleasantly surprised with the gunsmith here for Vanguard. This is actually very in-depth and a lot of fun. I have to say, overall, the game is really, really cool. You'll see here in-game the SCG-44 just hitting like a truck. It has a decent amount of visual recoil, which is good to see. Um, a lot of fun to use this weapon. This is kind of a very iconic weapon of World War II games And so I'm glad it is the first unlock here in the game And it actually is a lot of fun to use and you have a lot of unique options here for this weapon So let me know what you guys think of this weapon down below the SCT-44 Vampire If you're enjoying the content here on the channel, we'll have a few more weapon conversions coming up for Call of Duty Vanguard Go ahead and hit that like button subscribe to the channel and we'll also be having Battlefield 2042 coverage coming here next Friday a week from today when early access for Battlefield 2042 drops, we'll be getting all up in depth with that game as well. So for more Vanguard coverage, weapon conversions, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And we'll have a lot more Battlefield content coming up in a week from now. Till next time, this is Buckner Gaming with the FCG 44 Vampire from Call of Duty Vanguard. Till next time, Buckner Gaming, out.